Hi there, welcome back to Filmmaking Tips. I'm Josh and I've been doing virtual production in my living room. So thanks for joining me. Now I'm going to give you a little tour around my living room and what I've been doing with virtual production. That doesn't just mean filming on this green screen here, uh, but it also means using Unreal Engine and tracking the camera position so that I can use 3D assets on the green screen so they have parallax and so that they move more naturally and ultimately trying to make things a bit more realistic. Generally speaking, I hate green screen and that's why I want to try and make, make it better. Um, I've done some tests previously using uh, back projection which worked very well but as usual there's always a caveat when you're doing things that aren't real. Back projection you need a lot of distance between yourself, the lights uh, and the screen otherwise you get a lot of light spill on it making sure uh, well it basically means your black levels are muddy and greyish instead of pure black which is troublesome. But when you use a green screen you can actually use the live assets so the color will be accurate but of course it brings whole bunch of other different problems like lighting the green screen. So I've got two, I don't know if you can see here, uh, there. I've got these two uh, LEDs, newer LEDs, uh, they're the 660 model and they're basically on a C stand which is here, so you can see that, and also a flag as well mounted to the same C stand. I'm going to pop through here, it might be easier to see. And that means I am supposed to sit here. I'm going to mount this camera here. So the big deal is I'm trying to make a short film called Cabby and that's a film entirely set inside a cab and at the best of times filming inside a car is tricky which eats into schedule times, eats into budget and all sorts. So I'm going to attempt green screen but I'm going to do it with Unreal Engine and I'm going to do it with 3D assets if it works, that's if I can make it look good. So today I've already finished my shooting for the day but I've got my green screen set up fairly evenly lit given the space I've got. The two LED lights are about 60 inches away from the screen themselves and they're giving a fairly good spread but uh, I don't have an extra um, 60 inches to spare here. So if I move myself too far away from the screen the screen will become too small and I won't have enough room to move around. So I'm either going to need a bigger screen or a larger space uh, or both. This reflector is bouncing off some 3D assets from Unreal Engine. That's the side view of the car window. So what that's doing is as the car moves you can see the light changing on this side of my face like that which is dynamic lighting that's being streamed directly from Unreal at the moment. I'll show you around a few other things. Let's come, let's get, let's get you off here. Okay, right. This is the whole thing about filming in your living room. It's just really small. So you can see, this is kind of my scene here, which is um, a street scene that I've built using some free assets from the Unreal Marketplace. So that's running there, and then it's running from back of my computer, HDMI cable to the projector right here. Here's the tracker, which I've just finished using now actually. So that's the Vive tracker right there. That would normally go on this camera that I'm holding right now. That is being picked up by Unreal Engine as well. And the Vive base station is over there. There it is. Ready to pick up the tracker signal. So at the moment I'm trying this with a tripod but generally speaking the idea would be to have the Vive tracker on this camera so that when I move around left right and the green screens behind me it should all move and I'm not really ready to test that just yet. What I want to make sure is that I can actually get the green screen keyed well and the background looking realistic. That's pretty much an overview of what I've got going on in here. We can now dive into After Effects with the different layers I've captured and you can have a look at what the result of this test was. See you in a moment. Okay, so here we are in After Effects. As you can see, this is the footage that I shot previously and I've already put a mask around the edge. 
uh, I did this and I'll show you I'll just quickly toggle that mask on and off here uh, none and you can see I've masked off uh, this flag which is you know blocking some of the light so I'm just going to run you through some of the plugins that I use to create the effect you're about to see. Uh, the first one being a Lumetri color. Now I've used this uh, not very intensive uh, effect. It's just a custom LUT uh, downloaded from the Panasonic website. This LUT uh, is the nicest LUT. It's actually what it's called. It doesn't mean it's the nicest. It's just called that. So I've just applied that in order to bring out the green a bit more so it's easier to key. I haven't had as much luck keying uh, log footage. I think it's always better to throw on uh, LUT first. Then these are just the uh, inbuilt After Effects keying plugins. So Key Light is the first one. Uh, before I turn it on, uh, you'll see I'm using an intermediate result rather than a final result. There's a very strong reason for that. The final result looks like garbage because it basically overgrades, overcorrects your footage and it can end up looking quite noisy and messy. I'll turn this effect on right now and as you can see that's me masked out. I'll show you what's going on in here. Um, my recommendation so far with having messed around with this plugin for quite a while now, try your best to keep these by the, their default values. I've had to actually push these a little bit uh, more than I would normally like, but uh, moving the screen gain and balance is probably not the best method for getting a clean key. Uh, but if you need to, it's possible to push them a little bit. If you use the screen matte overlay, you can see that the white area is the, uh, is the solid layer and the black being the transparent. You can see there's a nice bit of opacity around the hair, which is what you want. You do not want these really hard lines around the edge. And the status is another way of uh, seeing that you, just making sure that you've definitely gotten rid of all of the uh, green area. But I'm gonna nip back to intermediate results. Um, I've been messing with the clip black and clip white mainly. That's literally all I use. I don't mess with any of these other things because actually they have more of an impact or the impact entirely when you're using final result and uh, they don't apply when you're using intermediate. So an interesting thing that happens when you use key light in After Effects, if you type in key into your effects panel, you have key light options. This one here is, uh, well that's key light there for keying. There's also this key light uh, plus key cleaner plus advanced spill suppressor which is a good combo to use um, uh, to start with but I've actually found a slightly better method. The key light plugin, yes use it. Advanced spill suppressor, yes use it. Key cleaner though has given me some pretty messy uh, results. It uh, can over soften edges. It doesn't, it, it, it does reduce the sort of chatter. You can get a lot of sort of like bubbling and noise around the edge of a, of a key sometimes and that did a fair job but I always found there's, there's just this one thing that I couldn't solve and I was getting a sort of uh, edge like a just color edge around the uh, around the footage which is sort of like slightly darker than my skin and not quite the same color as the background so it always looked like I had this tiny one or two pixel outline um, and then, until I found this other solution I was stuck. With key light in place the next thing to use is a refined soft matte. That is what I'm using in place of the key cleaner. It's really quite amazing what this thing does. Um, I wonder if I can show you. I've got this uh, temporary back background here. So without refined soft matte, um, it, the easiest way to see what it does is looking around the hair. So if I just turn it on, keep your eyes on that hair. See what it did there? It brought back quite a bit of, of extra detail, a little bit extra sort of transparency, some hairs that weren't there before. Same on this side actually, turn it off and on again there. Now this hard edge around the ear and this this is obviously still a little transparent but if you refine soft edge it really brings back quite a bit of detail and I've found here's what it here's its main superpower calculate edge details. With it checked on you're going to be so 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 careful that your edge radius is not too high. 
I've put it at four pixels, probably as far as I would push this. If you go to 10, you can start getting bubbling and noise and what they're calling like chatter. That's why they have a re chatter reduction section. But even with that turned all the way up, if you have too much of an edge radius, you're gonna get still a bit of chatter because it starts to not quite be able to tell the difference between your green background and the edge of your subject. So I keep that really low and I, I've turned this all the way up. Its other superpower is the decontaminate edge colors, which if I turn it off, it does a fair job. And this is actually the setting that helped me reduce the edge, this, the, the border I was getting around my subject, which isn't mega apparent here, but with it on, it's even pulling back more detail here uh, in, in this side of, of my hair. So I'll turn it off and on again so you can see that. You can see just there's a few hairs just coming back, which I hope you can tell uh, <laughs> on YouTube. If you can't, don't worry about it. It does it. Um, anyway, finally, and be careful as well not to put the spill suppressor before soft mat. The order of your plugins matters. That is the keying. Uh, all in place. Um, you will see a clip of this end of the video, so stick around for that. Um, but I'm going to now show you what's happening now with the background that I've done via Unreal Engine uh, and trying to integrate all of these elements. This is the camera from Unreal Engine. Quite a basic sort of city scene, car driving scene, and I plap me on top. There we go. Now, obviously, I don't quite match the background at this point. But having the two layers, you can see that I, I fit perfectly where I should be in the frame. I composed these in Unreal Engine as a guide for where I was going to be placed. So it's not just luck. I was put in that position specifically because it looked like the right place to be when I shot it. So there was a monitor uh, from my computer, which you saw, and that's how I know what's, uh, what's being composited on, on top of another. So a couple of other magic effects that I'm using. Super Comp is a red giant effect, not a built-in plugin for After Effects, but uh, it, to be honest, is the one plugin that I can find that actually does a few things. I, I actually don't have the expertise in After Effects to do. Um, and I'll show you what these are by just turning, toggling them on and off. So I'll turn the Super Comp layer on so you can have a look up here and you can see what it's doing in its entirety that is blending me quite nicely with the color of the backdrop and it's doing that in a few ways so one of them is this color correction where there's a literal button that says match background it knows the background because i've dragged it in down here and i say match background with it out without it with it without it with it it was that simple i've done nothing to any of this uh, none of these other settings have been touched and then you've got an edge blend, which is a slight edge radius. Probably don't even need much of that, to be honest. But here's the main one that I love, and that's light wrap. It is taking the lights from the background and wrapping me in them to give it a sense, especially around here, around the ear. It's a little bit of sort of light blooming to sort of try and bring the two layers together like that. Really good, amazing stuff. Uh, and on the background, I've even got a little bit of diffusion because I am, um, by default, I didn't have the um, any kind of blooming as you would expect to see in camera if you were filming lights, city lights. So it just gives a little bit of extra kind of light bloom. Uh, and of course, what it's doing with the light bloom on, the top layer is being affected by that via these effects as well. It's really smart. I love it. Finally, we are getting into the very, very end. A bit of a color grade on top. It's a bit dark, but to be honest with you, I think I just need to improve my lighting overall on this scene. And I will show you the final result now. So thanks for joining me on this brief dive into After Effects and using Unreal backgrounds and trying to match the two. Refining the lighting is where the effort needs to go next. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you on the next one.